Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so let me let me let me start again, hopefully more coherently. I spoke to Jessica Crean earlier. She had just gotten here. She said one of the things she's appreciated about this already is that it is small, it is easy to talk to other people and network, that it's been pretty fluid in terms of what you do or how you do it. Um, and so the question to me ends up being, knowing that there are a lot of different games conferences now, which was not the case 10 years ago. Like 10 years ago, GLS, I think those of us who were there, it was like the only game in town, pun intended. So there wasn't all this competition. And as I started planning this, actually a month into planning, I heard back from Constance and Kurt over in UC Irvine, who said, oh, that sounds great, but we're going to start GLS up again, and it's the week after your thing. And I thought, well, shit, that sucks. Like, uh, now we're going to be cannibalizing the people that we would hopefully have at either conference, especially because, and this is something that's come up repeatedly over the last year, there is limited funding available for travel. So universities have clamped down on the availability of money to be able to send people to stuff like this. And the reason I had chosen June 1st through 3rd was not because it's some magical time of year necessarily, although I will say, generally speaking, the weather's decent in Connecticut at this point. Um, it's also far enough after graduation that students have cleared out and there's nobody on campus. It is not, however, far enough into the summer that K-12 teachers can attend for the most part because they are still teaching. Um, so that's a, a wrinkle in my thinking about this. So my presumption is, and I don't know this for sure, but my presumption has been that GLS will continue to be an annual event. One of the things that Kurt and Constance emphasized when they told me about it is that their goal right now, at least as I understand it, is to further integrate industry with academia, to look at how can a company like Blizzard Activision, which is headquartered in Irvine, work with academics who are doing game stuff to fund projects or collaborate on projects, et cetera. Whereas when we started thinking about what this could be, we really wanted to focus on the scholarly elements of this because I, I don't know about everybody, I can't speak for everybody in the room, but I know that for myself, it is not particularly helpful to focus on industry because industry will never find what I do profitable. So there's no, <laughs> there's no connection between what I do and what they do other than the fact that we all do game stuff. And uh, I used to go to AERA quite frequently, especially during grad school. Events like that have become uninteresting to me for a variety of reasons, not least of all that it's a pandemic and going to a place with 20,000 people is not appealing. But more than that, even if the pandemic was gone tomorrow, there's two issues. One of them is these conferences have gotten so large and so diluted that the things that people are talking about are either not relevant to what I do or so niche that, you know, there's no reason to have 20,000 people there. Um, the other component is they're very expensive and you have to pay a lot of a lot for a membership and you get services in return for that. But I don't know if, about everybody else. I personally don't utilize those services or find them helpful beyond being an additional service requirement for myself to be on some committee or, you know, run some kind of peer review system or something. So as I kind of work through what could this look like and why, that was at the back of my mind. Um, what are our goals? Well, they're to do scholarly stuff with other scholars who are teaching and learning with games and not focused on creating the next big profitable engine for um, capitalism. Uh, I also think that, and this has come up with a couple of my students, former students now that I've talked to about this, the games industry is, especially indie uh, design, has changed a lot in five years where there is a super saturation of material. And I would rather sort of curate a series of presentations or projects that are directly related to one another than sort of just fill the room with everything that exists. Um, I, I think that does justice to the people who are just entering the field and trying to get into it. I think it also moves us beyond this question of can games be used to teach, which I think is boring and has already been answered a hundred thousand times over. So where does that bring us? Um, obviously this event has been happening now for almost two days. I feel pretty good about people's experience with it. Although I'm kind of like basing that on as, you know, side comments from people as I'm talking to them or running around between uh, offices or classrooms. Um, now that I've been through this process once as 
a planner of this event and um, with no real assistance other than Juliet, although I will say Juliet has been a godsend. Like I could not have done this without event coordinating help, uh, event coordinating um, from Juliet. Um, I think there are things I would wanna do differently to distribute or delegate responsibility next time so that I don't have to be doing tech and also setting up slides and setting up the WebEx. Although I will say that even the WebEx live streaming was a last minute addition because of an ADA request. So we didn't have access to those resources until somebody asked for them because they were deaf or hard of hearing. And that opened up a lot of opportunity for us to say, okay, well, now we can live stream this. Um, so over Memorial Day weekend, that's what Juliet and I did was figure out how do we make this work? Um, so that's why you see me running in and out and logging into all these machines is the only way WebEx will work that way is if I use my personal login for the university on every machine to simultaneously exist in all of these ongoing discussions. Um, so those are kinks that I think could be worked out. I think delegating responsibility would be easier now having seen all the different elements that need to be in place. I think the tech stuff can be sorted out more easily than in the past. Um, I guess my questions to all of you are first, is this worth doing again? Do we want to do this again? And, and would you want to host it here again? Because um, I know obviously this Connecticut's not exactly centrally located in the United States. Um, on the flip side of that, going to Irvine is also not particularly centrally located, especially if you live on the East Coast. So maybe it's okay to have one thing on either coast and let people figure out what's best for them. Um, another question is, are there things you would change about the formats that we've used? Would you want them oriented in some different way? Like, should the whole thing be unconference? Should it be all presentations? Should we do the arcade again? Like, um, so which elements of it are working or not working for you? And I guess the third question is, um, do you think there's value in expanding the number of people who are invited or is it better to keep it as a smaller event with maybe 50 to 70 people, um, which does, necessitate some figuring out of how do we figure out who to invite or not invite or how do we set up the registration we had done it as first come first serve this time around and granted covid threw some wrenches into that where like there were there were folks who were supposed to present who couldn't come in the last minute because they contracted covid or you know their kids caretaker for when they were going to travel contracted covid so they had to take over their kids and do take care of that sort of thing um i'm hopeful although maybe naive, but we'll see that this will not be forever. Like there will be a way that we can do this more quote unquote normally. Um, so I don't know what registration could look like, although I personally feel pretty satisfied with the 50 to 70 number, given how it's turned out so far, but I'm open to suggestions there. So now I want to open it up to all of you and, and say like, was this worth doing again? What do you think it should look like? Uh, how many people should be here? You know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think a little bit more, a little, a little bit more people because I feel like there are many, many perspectives, but I know that there are so many more. It's mm -hmm. not 200, like 150, yeah, 100. Like, at that point, you can still like go and meet people, but it's not so overwhelming mm -hmm. that it's like people just get lost in the slew of it all. But I definitely would value even more different perspectives on like, how do you design games? What are the principles mm -hmm. that you use when thinking about that design work, right? I think that would be very interesting to get, to, to essentially have more arguments mm -hmm. about some of those things right now. Like, obviously, I don't mean argument, like- Right, right, right. I know, I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think that that would be really cool to see even more of, and I don't think, like you're saying, like, right, sub 200, like, not so much that, but also people who are more naive about some of that. I would think I would value that because they would ask different kinds of questions um, that I think could be really useful for people who are naive about niche areas, mm -hmm. but aren't in, or, but have very large depth and breadth in others. Right? So having people who are more generally naive that have a sensibility to this kind of conference could open to the When you say generally naive, you mean like about like people uh, here might be Yeah. People here might be hard to disagree. So I, I was, I, we were having this conversation earlier, um, uh, I'm, I'm sort of in the post associate world struggling to figure out like, well, now do I, do I lean just hard and do only game conferences? Do I, do I keep one foot in rhetoric? And one of the things that I've loved is that we've just sort of bracketed. <laughs> Can you use games to teach at this conference? 
because that's not bracketed at most of the conferences mm -hmm. that I go to. And I, as a younger scholar, certainly valued them. Um, and as somebody that was trying to stay grounded in rhetoric, you know, like everybody does that first. I used games in my class for the first time presentation, right? And here's your James Paul G citation, um, you know, and like there's there's a place for that. But I love that this is not the place for that. This is the place for people who are like two steps further down that journey. I'd, be, I'd, I'd like to hear from Trent and Roger about that because we've had that discussion and I'm curious how it's played out relative to your expectation. I thought we were going to do like a parliament thing where I'd shout, yeah! <laughs> But no, that's that's my thought too. Is that there are places to go uh, to learn if you're not so sure. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of the, the leveled up version, right? This is where if you if you like one of the things I was going to say that not to and I guess maybe Roger can answer after this. One of the things that I would really like is more structured play sessions to be able mm -hmm. to say I'm willing to yeah. run X, Y, or Z. That's a good idea. And then people signing up beforehand because mm -hmm. it's it, it, I'm, it's also at the point where and we talked about this when when you were setting this up. I need something to be able to report back to mm. say I did more than drink beer and play games, even though really why I came. <laughs> I know, like that's, that's <laughs> I, that, but the reason why I came was mostly to drink beer and play games. I had really good conversations while doing those, right? right. But that's where I would, I've never partaken in a LARP, so and I would love for many of our for many of our LARP, LARP yeah. people to say, "Hey, look, we'll do a two-hour LARP on yes. Wednesday night." Right? I would sign up for that in a heartbeat. Or D and D. Or D &D. Like, I can. Yeah, that's the thing is I could I could host. Or, I've got a bunch of games that I just don't know. Like yeah. role playing that's not D and D. That's Even not D and Crow. Yeah. Coyote and Crow. Yeah. Exactly. Coyote Coyote and I would take it on other yeah. things that really like. The so Wednesday night was like the oh drink beer and play board games and stuff and I was looking at all the games and some of them was like okay we'll need to like half an hour yeah. to get <laughs> instructions and then it's a two hour game and like yeah. how and much we understand exactly yeah 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 like yeah. Coulter had a board game. It's like okay we're gonna sit down. I'm the board game map. I'm gonna do this game I'm and so everyone. Fan. Exactly. And I think that would have been a more structured play session. Yeah. And so, maybe uh, yeah, an opportunity for, like, I feel like in a, a, we got a little chance in some of the talks to mm -hmm. play some of the games that people were talking about, either longer so we have more time to play those games, mm -hmm. or like the folks who talked in the morning, maybe in addition to the unconference, who are like going to mm -hmm. have a session to like actually try to well, play the game that they yeah. created for their. Well, I don't do that as a presenter. I was like, do I just want to tell them to go to my website and play my game? <laughs> like, yeah. do I, do I, is this an academic, like, let me define survivance and red pedagogy, you know? And I, I was really unsure. And I think I leaned further into a traditional presentation mm -hmm. than into a, like, I made some shit, now let's play it. <laughs> uh, but, I, yeah. but I was really uh, personally unclear about, like, which of these, because I can do both, and mm -hmm. I love both. I just don't know where I need to be. I, so that's super interesting. I mean, thinking about when registering for something, there could be like two different definitions that you can choose from. Yeah. One being more traditional presentation, and you can make it clear like this is the style, and one that's more, hey, this is like, like this is a yeah. workshop. Like we're going to play the game. I read a conference once, and we had play sessions and present sessions. Yeah, so that's what, what I was going to say. Yeah. Both, yeah. Right, yeah. but. Into some play testing. Mm -hmm. The yeah. valuable thing that this community can do is go, we got a shit ton of game design experience here. Mm. And I think a one hour play testing, you know, rapid session of this is the game I'm thinking about. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. What do these mechanics look like? Could elevate the production value of this or the output of what comes from this conference. So I get back to capitalism. I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, one thing that you said during lunch, Wendy. Um, when we were eating lunch outside the student union, Wendy had brought up the problem that a lot of us have run into, which is you make a game, you try to get it published uh, through like academic channels. Those academic channels are only designed to take papers. And so they say, well, it's nice that you made that game, but where's the paper that you wrote about the thing you made, which is, then becomes two projects, right? So CMU Press mm -hmm. is specializing in um, publishing games. And that, that was their whole reason for it, because they're like, everyone that's in the tenure track needs to publish it. Right. If you're making a game, you get no credit for it, mm -hmm. unless you write up an article about it, unless you do it. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, 
or specifically making an academic press to publish games to give credit to game publishers. That makes me think that you're right about the opportunity to do play testing as peer review, yeah. because yeah. this is the one place you can get the right kinds of peer reviewers to do so that work. That instead, this is game peer review. That's uh, a good idea. You're right. Yeah. That all of a sudden adds the credibility. That's just part of the process. Honestly, I know the, the guy that runs the CMU press. Uh, if you want to invite him here, I would, would love to. That's a great him. idea. I So, so I, what I'm taking away from this is during, so the way that I initially offered this was last summer emailing a bunch of people and saying, here's a survey. It's Qualtrics. Would you show up if we did this? And if you showed up, would you want to give a talk? Like, what would that be about? And so I backward manufactured the schedule out of who responded to that. Um, I don't know how sustainable that would be or how scalable it would be, because if you invite 500 people and 150 of them say, yes, I want to present something, suddenly there's a huge logistical problem. But assuming it stayed relatively small and that helps give credibility to the use of travel funds, especially if you know you need to be able to say, I didn't just drink beer and play games all week, like to say, okay, here's the, the new Qualtrics form we're going to do. Um, if you were to come here, there are two tracks. One of them is this game peer review process, which would be play testing. The other would be a traditional sort of presentation or workshop that, you know, mostly people have been doing here the last two days. Um, and that way the, the schedule could actually be distributed so that, you know, let's say there were enough people to support four breakouts instead of three, two of them could be peer reviewed game stuff. Two of them could be traditional presentations and you have enough bodies present to be able to support all of that. Um, I really like that idea. I think that's a great idea. So I'm also realizing now when I when I was saying that you would say, I think what I meant was less good listening to this. I think that you're actually very right about some amount of knowledge and experience not asking that question. I think I I think what I'm thinking of it, I literally mean they just don't have a lot of practice executing one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like they have a lot of the base knowledge, or like the only thing I've done is base. Yeah. Right. That's the only thing I've really effectively done yet. And so, in comparison to people who have worked a long time some of these, there's a lot of value to for me and yeah. me and coming here because I'm already not on the step of oh, I'm going to ask questions about like does that work at all? But I have a lot of naivete in the sense of I don't know how to execute some of these things. Quite as well as people who might have a lot of experience. Yeah, I think, yeah, so you, I think, yeah. I think we're talking about like established in the field versus up and coming in yeah, the field. Yeah, I think that's a better way. Of yeah, time. and I think up yes. and coming in the field. Acknowledging the field exists. Yeah. <laughs> Base level agreement that there is a field. Yeah, right. Totally. Because when you said that, you say, I'm thinking of people that aren't necessarily right. even Can games be used to field? teach yes or no? And if yes. you put no, it cuts you off. <laughs> well, questions I kind of want to throw back to you is how, like having run conferences before, mm -hmm. how sustainable is this for you, both fiscally and personally? I'm glad you asked that. So I'm going to. I'm going to separate them. So first, financially, the support for this came through the ed tech program. Everyone's registration fee of $150 is at a steep discount relative to what it costs to bring everybody here and support this conference, um, which is not to say I think that $150 is, is nothing. But when you factor in travel and a hotel and all these other things like pay, this is one of the things that used to drive me up uh, bananas about going to other conferences is it's like I already have to pay for all that other stuff and now I have to drop four hundred dollars just to walk yeah. in the door like that's a lot of money and I had had a conversation with one colleague who said like oh you're generating a profit on this right and I'm like that's not the point like my goal is not to make money off of people from this it's to bring together people I think have you know similar interests and goals and everything and so I think to the extent that the ed tech budget can sustain. And, and this is also born of, we had a full cohort this year of 22 people, and that generates 500,000 to $600,000 for us. And now that we have, we have more TAs this coming year than we did this past year. We have, yeah, it's Corey's fault. Um, well, there goes next year. Yeah, we, all, we have a smaller cohort. So I, I guess the, on the financial angle, I think it's possible because it's not actually that expensive to do this overall relative to the rest of our budget. Like, I think at the end of the day, this will have cost us about 20 to $25,000 total. And I don't think that's bad. We, like we that's spend a, more on AOS than we spend right. on. Right. Like, I, I think that this is something that's manageable. I, I think 
I mean, how much do you think people would tolerate a slightly increased registration fee? Like, so I would. I was just gonna say one thing I really like that GLS did mm -hmm. is they had a four hundred dollar price point, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then everybody who asked, here's a coupon, here's a discount. Yeah. Here's, so what that did is, so my university hasn't cut travel. Mm -hmm. I was actually encouraged to spend because they're like, you got savings for the last three mm -hmm. years. Go <laughs> ahead, and I was like. So if it was 400, if it was 800, no one would have batted it on an eye, and I could have been just like, hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that subsidized, then I'd go 800. <laughs> You're telling me that it's not worth $800 to see me? Come on. But, but then it can basically subsidize everyone else. So, you know, the, the student that emails and says, hey, I can't make it, or, you know, a, a K-12 teacher that might not have any budget at all, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that's $50, $100. Yeah. With the unsaid thing of like the university budget is subsidizing this. Yeah. I mean, I think that also you could just formalize that right. and have a grad student. Yeah, right. Right. Well, and yeah. a tenure stream we, faculty we, rate. I, I will say my school was shocked that it was only one day. Yeah. Like three day conference for $150. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, like, right. For, for yeah. Right. Well, so yeah, to Coulter's point, we actually did do something like that where essentially it was set at general registrations, 150 bucks. And then for students who are present here or recent graduates, I just zeroed out whatever they owed. So we'll pay the difference at the end of all of this. Um, there are actually a couple of other attendees who had financial issues and couldn't have attended otherwise or whatever that I just zeroed it out for them too and said, just call yourself a student and it's fine because I'm the only one who's going to see that. Um, <laughs> So I, I do think that works, and maybe you're right, like, for those who have travel budgets, it probably is more reasonable to do more than 150 and use that to buffer some of the other yeah. costs. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think it's really as simple as if if you're interested in attending, but there are financial things, reach out at blank email. And, you know, I feel like yeah. a blanket even up to four, I would not. Uh, over four is when I would start looking at, like, what other conferences am I doing? Right. This is nice because our fiscal year starts June 1. Mm -hmm. So this is on the new fiscal oh, okay. year for me. Oh. Um, so, so you're you're right at the start of the budget. I don't have to make any decisions now. So this is like uh, October period. This is like <laughs> that's so where we that. are too. Yeah. Um so but yeah, I certainly feel like um I I think though I would just formalize at least for like Grad students, adjuncts, K to twelve. This is a this yeah. is a lower rate, and then this the statement because you know, like there are people that will need that support that will never email, yeah. and I, mm -hmm. I don't like it only being available for the people in the know mm -hmm. that feel comfortable reaching out. And I agree. They want yeah, discount. I that's, agree. that's it's it's cool if that's still available. It's but, a little bit. Uh, Get one, get one. Mm -hmm. uh, this type of function. Oh, that's actually not a bad uh, way to frame it. Like sponsor someone who would write. So the, the only downside with that is that it would have to be informal because there's no way my university would write paper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the yeah, so putting the poll. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. signed up for like the sponsorship <laughs> workshop. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that means that it's not the price. I like that. Uh, that's, that's a good idea. It's so the personal. Yeah, so that I was coming <laughs> gonna come back to that. So on a personal note, so I don't have kids or anything that I have to juggle. It makes it a little bit easier for me to handle something like this. I do have some you get it. That feels with me enough, it's good. Like I hear about Trent's kids enough and I'm like, yeah. that's cute. I don't have to touch them, it's fine. <laughs> um so I, I I guess from a personal perspective, like I it was very time consuming in figuring out how would any of these pieces even fit together over the last year because COVID was a contingency and um, how much do you charge and can we even get space and where would we do this? And so there's a lot of the sort of building an infrastructure for it. I do think that doing this again would be much easier because all that infrastructure is there. Like the website, I go in now, click a couple of things, type in some new stuff, it's done. I don't have to build a new website. I don't have to advertise as much because we'll have photos and videos and other things we can show people say, yeah, this was a thing you could come and, and participate in. So those things I think would all be easier. Um, one of the other nice things about my job is because it's inherently interdisciplinary, I am not on the tenure track or tenure clock. So 
none of that affects me either. I'm not losing out on publishing time or whatever as a result of doing this. It, it honestly is something I saw as just an opportunity available to me because of my job. And um, I had said this to some of you, but like the other day, my mom had called me and said like, oh, how's your thing going? Are you ready for it? And I said, yeah, it's fine. And she said, like, do you get credit for this? And I'm like, what do you, what credit do you think a university gives any faculty? Like, they that's, write it in my permanent record. Yeah, they'll put it on a piece of paper and say, good job. Um, and so I, I don't look at it as being, uh, a, to me, this is a beneficial experience. And I wanted people to come here and do this, partly as a reunion of sorts with people I haven't seen in a while, but also because it is professionally useful to me. And because of all these other things we've talked about regarding peer review of games and understanding the struggle of developing these materials, including, you know, how do you get them funded? And what does it take to actually build a thing? And what do you do with this stuff to teach with it? Like those conversations are fulfilling to me. And I think it's worth having something like this just to be able to keep having them. Because one thing that happened when GLS stopped or dissolved uh, back in, I don't know, 2017, 2018, whenever it was, um, it, it had lost a lot of what it made it interesting to begin with, which is meeting people who get it, right? Like that, and this is a group of people that I think gets it. And, and to go back to Coulter's point about up and coming versus established people, I've been thinking of it in terms of, let's invite everybody I know who's kind of in the field that I, I, I know about through either personal interaction or through other people. Here are the big programs that are doing stuff emailing them and saying, would you do this? And if so, do you know other people that you would recommend for this kind of thing? And having sort of a, uh, an, an open, partially open, partially closed invitation to- Friend of a friend system. Exactly, yeah. sort of the friend of a friend yeah, network grad system. Who would be interested. In I mean, I actually did ask people to forward it to their grad students or whomever they yeah. thought would be a good fit, mostly because I knew there were a lot of faculty who were gonna have to choose between coming here or going to GLS or these other things. So you can distribute some of that um, ability or experience across multiple different places for different purposes. Like I think, again, GLS is gonna serve a different purpose now than something like this. Um, so to go back to your original question, I think it is personally manageable. I think it's worth doing again. Um, I, I do feel better about having some of this infrastructure in place and experience having done it. That said, I would, I would love to be able to delegate this to grad students. Yeah, I, was I, was about, um, I was about to suggest that. Yeah. But, oh. <laughs> well, well, like, well it, so it is a valuable yeah. experience for DMV students, yeah. tech students, even uh, some humanities students. That's it's exposure yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite exposure. Yeah. Um, well, and to that end, I actually think, I mean, when, when Kurt and Constance started GLS at UW Madison, it was entirely run by grad yeah. students. Yeah. They did not do the legwork associated with much of it. They were just kind of there to supervise and I don't want to have that removed a role. Yeah. I, I think it's good for me to be in contact with Juliet and be part of these planning discussions. But things like, you know, so and so, you're responsible for WebEx. Find three people you can work with to log into these computers so that I don't have to run around. Or somebody else bring a camera so I don't have to take photos. So, like that would be nice getting somebody from DMD who's a photographer. Like Ken. Right. Well, I mean, exactly. Like Ken is doing that as a favor to me, or Cassandra's doing it as a favor to me. But, um, you know. Yeah, like, right. Like, I, I, I do think you can rely on us some more, especially now because both of us have now been through this. Yeah. yeah. We and modeled it once. I, I, yeah. I do think that's a strength, too. Like, I had to go through this myself to make sure it could work. And now that I have that knowledge, I feel more comfortable saying, OK, here's a thing I know you can do that. Here's who you need to talk to. These are the kinds of things you need to take into consideration. So back to your point, like, I, I do think it is more sustainable going forward than it was even getting it up off yeah. the ground. Um, and so I, I don't feel bad about this. So th this raises the other question of how, when do we do this? Like, do we do it every year? Do we do it every other year? Do we do it in June? Do we do it at a different time of year? Like, what is the general feeling about what this could or should look like in terms of, of, of timing? On a full more K-12 student. Well, and- but, but this is the question, do we? Yeah. You want to, right? Yeah. Like, There's very wildly, very yeah. different. I, I, I mean, this is something that we, we do have to address. I feel like a right. niche here is scholar. Yeah. 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 And and if if K twelve teachers are, are are really kind of trying to work in that space, then it's kind of on them 
and and I mean we, we need to we need to meet the needs of the target audience. First and foremost. Would, yeah. would there be a possibility of maybe instead of doing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday with a K 12 extension on Saturday? I, um, I can ask about that. I mean, again, the reason it ended up being yeah. June 1st or 3rd was I asked Juliet, what are, when are buildings yeah. available and yeah. when can I get in them? Because this was, by this point, it was, it was. Pretty close yeah. to August, and she's yeah. like, everything's getting booked. So you need to decide, especially because UConn's orientation is taking place now. So you might have seen yeah. students yeah. Yeah. going through. So those are all freshmen or, or first year students that are coming into the university. And um, I personally liked this timing, like whether it's Wednesday through Friday or Thursday through Saturday or whatever is fine with me. But I, I actually think end of May, beginning of June is the best time for me because I have the least things going, no, fewest things going on. Everything is just ramping up. Um, right. And so I go, this is kind of the, the calm before the storm. Yeah. You're actually the start of the storm. Yeah. <laughs> that feels pretty cool. <laughs> I, I do like the suggestion for like Saturday because having because that could be more accessible for some people. Even if it's just like and you could even have a registration just for Saturday stuff. We mm -hmm. talked There's about like that. Um, room with a bunch yeah. of games. It was a little yeah. too late to kind of make it happen. And this actually brought up the K twelve discussion because Juliet and I had talked about should we be inviting K-12 teachers and um, Sean Cornegay, who you might have seen this morning, was taking photos. Yeah. She works as the social media manager for the School of Education, and, and she had asked, do we want a $500, $1,000 ad buy on Facebook for targeted ads? And I'm like, that's not going to work for what we're trying to do. Like, that level of specificity, the odds are they already know about this. Yeah. So, like, there's no point in targeting ads at them. Um, but I do think that there could potentially be value in like a day pass for somebody to come as their professional development day. Um, we talked about doing a reduced rate for that. So maybe you pay. Yeah, exactly. Offer CEUs or something. Um, and I think some of us are working on games that we would want to yeah. get in front of K to 12 teachers. Yeah. So like I would, I would present the game that I showed here in a very different way if I were showing it to K-12 teachers, it wouldn't be design challenges, mm -hmm. right? It would be like, how do you use Definitely. this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the peer review, just play testing, right. right? And that would be, I think, the difference. See, I would say just demo. It's not like a thing. Oh, no. At this point, yeah. it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's here's how they do this. Demo like yeah. Ours. You have the Saturday be like, we're all in CDD. Ever, like there's a line of folks, here's my game, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna be in room 119 yeah. and then mm -hmm. doing like demos. Feel free to come. Oh yeah, like, a, like, like a tasting. Yeah, like a yeah. tasting. Like so like you, people could yeah. see uh, like, oh, here are all the games available. Uh, here's kind of what they do. Yeah. Go to this room to get a, a more thorough thing and maybe have it a little more just like wander like from one room to the next sort of. So hey, hey, I'm, I'm yeah, go ahead, Rose. Maybe we think of it as a separate stage of the event. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 yeah, it's a vendor ball. Yeah, it's a yeah. Showcase. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a games showcase. You have people to go through, demo, play games. And, and I, don't, I mean, I don't think that excludes also having a panel or two on that day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Intended for that. Yeah, that's a good well, an entry level. You might remember that uh, GLS did have a day on the Wednesday before, because they did yeah. well, Thursday they did through. A couple of different configurations. Our first year, um, I think this was maybe just being like Saturday was, but wasn't done specifically for, for K-12. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next year they did something on the front. It was the end. beginning of it, I yeah, think. Yeah. I mean, and maybe that gets to the question you were talking about, Roger. Of, are we really targeting K-12 teachers? Because I, I don't think we are. I, I really think that that introduces a lot of complexities mm -hmm. that we're not interested in, in juggling. And when I say we, I mean, like, all of us who are mm -hmm. here. Like, um, I, I don't really want to go back to some of the James yeah. G stuff <laughs> that's a decade and a half old now that's like, if you're just reading about that, I don't think this is going to be for you. On the flip side, if it was oriented so that one day that we knew K-12 would have greater ability to be able to attend, we could assign those kinds of things to that day. And the earlier portions would be focused on the scholarly part of, hey, we're all the people who are doing these developments and publications and talking about the, the higher order sort of problems or, or interesting challenges of game design and for education. So charge them triple. Yeah, they subsidize us. That's, I think, well, um, 
them three credits of <laughs> right, well, exactly. well, well, if the scale for that part is that it would actually subsidize some of them, depending on that scale. Well, and it would change the dynamics of feeding people, right? Yeah. Like uh, giving out a bunch of the dining cards is a lot less expensive than actually having catering. So like saying your K-12 teachers are coming for this play testing Saturday session or whatever we would call it. Yeah. Um, and maybe you have a couple of panels, maybe you have a presentation or two or throughout the day or whatever. And those are specifically tailored at K-12. I do think that'll generate better conversations with them yes. as opposed to trying to do everything with every presentation, yes. which is yeah. trying to speak to audiences that are this far yeah. apart. Yeah. That's what, I mean, I really like the plenary sessions and the open discussions, because I would say having gone to many different game conferences over the years, the three, the three paper model mm -hmm. the middle one is always i test i tried teaching with games for my first time and here's where it went wrong uh, and you know within the first three minutes you're like can i give this presentation because uh, i know what i don't, I, don't <laughs> like, I could tell you before you started why this was going to go wrong and that has no i mean that not to be condescending that has no value that is value for someone that has no value for me and i hate it when it's the middle paper you don't want to walk out in the middle, right? You got to sit there and you can like ask snarky questions or whatever. So if that was going to be a track, I think that's a separate question or like an unconference thing, okay. right? Do you have an unconference? Like, are you just getting started? Do you have some basic questions as opposed to being the person in the back? Did you ever think to maybe, you know, like instead of being that, that jerk. Um, I mean, proposed possibly Saturday for K to 12, uh, allow me to now walk entirely back <laughs> and say that like this has been great and i think we have some great ideas for tweaking mm. and maybe it would be good to run it one more time with well, like thank you for three tweaks tweaks yeah before we like then add the small because i think that this is a cool idea that is potentially um useful for a lot of us that are making some of these games at the same time, like this is another massive undertaking, yeah, exactly. massive coordination. Yeah. Don't know what next summer is going to look like playing wise. That's also true. <laughs> so, oh, like, Minky Pox by then. So, so, so maybe just kind of, I love the idea of like guided gaming sessions, um, more, more demo play testing, mm -hmm. right? Like, here we're, here we're. maybe, maybe but those tweaks, that. maybe those tweaks are enough. And then we see how next year goes, and then we we return to this question of like, K to twelve teachers are going to be there. They're so going to be there I, on that yearly. I, I was going to ask that question now. It's like, okay, so just getting a general opinion from those of you in the room, like, would you rather do this next year in June, or would you rather wait for it another year? Which I do feel like is when you have momentum, you should probably keep yeah. pushing yeah. into it as opposed to saying, well, I'm going to pump the brakes now and wait <laughs> and then see what happens. Like that, that does seem like it comes with a lot of risk, um, especially because I can walk out of here tomorrow afternoon with Julia and say, let's book a room. Let's book yeah. the space we need for next year. Yeah. I actually would rather not use this building. I wanted to use the one across the, the road from this one because it is a brand new building that actually has very large spaces uh, that can be broken into multiple components. There are two lecture halls in it. There, like, there's a lot of affordances that we just missed out on because I waited too long to request that space. So um, that is something I could do now for next year that would solve some of those problems immediately. Um, if we were to do that, like would everyone in this room feel like it's worth coming back and doing this next summer? Yeah. And, and does everyone feel pretty good about the timing? Um, the June yeah. the beginning I, of June. I would still say, like, I still think Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Even if we're not doing the whole thing, I will point out right. that one one other thing to consider there is the cost of flights, which is see. dynamic and it depends on the day of the week. Because I know, like, Caro coming in for the keynote was fine. Caro came in on Tuesday, and flights are pretty cheap at the beginning of the week. But, and then asked to leave on Monday because the flights, I mean, yep. we paid for that and, and Caro's going back to Boston and seeing family and friends and stuff anyway, but um, basically told us like, don't book me a flight on Friday afternoon or Saturday. It's going to cost you a fortune. Just do it on Monday. And so I, I do wonder about the timing of that. Um, I, I do. I, I did look at the calendar for next year. I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday would be May 31st, June 1st and June 2nd. So it would be almost identical in terms of timing. 
Um, I'm thinking of Rita Karina, that's on the calendar. It's easy. Right. Or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because it uh, helps one spend time with non academic family. That too. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit, especially if you have, you know, kids in school, you know, maybe that, that's a little bit easier because they're busy during the week or something. I don't know. What if you want to get away from Or if you want to escape your family, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Some folks are suggesting Saturday. Yeah, yeah, Can I touch like my Neo third rail and ask about the parallel session? Yeah, because I was really unhappy that I didn't get to go to Wendy's. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I was unhappy that you didn't go. To there, were, there were too many good sessions that I didn't get to go. To. So, so I don't think that's an argument for not making it bigger. Yeah, yeah. that's a very powerful argument yeah. for not making it bigger. I I agree. I also agree with you, and that is actually one of the things that I found deeply frustrating <laughs> as a, the person trying to put these things into a schedule was like. How do I make sure that, you know, if somebody is a science person and they really want to go to all the science sessions, that means I can't put them in parallel to one another. But then you end up with multiple sessions that are all interesting and you can't go to all three no matter what. So like I, I'm going to have to watch the recordings of everything yeah. anyway, because I haven't been in any of the rooms for a long period of time. But um, I, I do agree. And maybe the solution there is you have two instead of three simultaneously. So it reduces the amount of choice you have to make. On the flip side of that, we could eliminate the unconference and make that another session that was just formal, either peer review opportunities or presentation opportunities. Um, or I mean, I mean, is there any way to actually... Five days. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way to eliminate the parallel and, and just like take, take completely outside the box and, and say, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have this Ruby and Wendy and Trent. And we are going to be, we're going to curate it so we don't get the middle papers that try to talk about. We're going to put up in a room and, and we're going to talk beforehand and we're going to say, this, this, this is the, the 10 minutes of stuff I want to say about what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. and, then, and we actually try to relate it among it. And then we have a panel. And, That's and a good idea, all, too. Yeah. I mean, I want this conference to be all cleaner. No one has <laughs> to be, be apart from I actually think that's a clever idea, too. Like yeah. the idea, So, I had considered doing something similar to that earlier on when it was when there were more people who were saying, yes, I'm going to come and present this thing. It was a little bit easier because you had things that were thematically related. I do worry a little bit about the the conferenceification of presentation. Like, I really hate going to sessions that are 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Somebody asks a question about one of the projects. No one gets to answer any other question. Right. Which is what Trent is talking about. Yeah. That's specifically not what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I understand. I'm saying what we do is because we have a boutique conference or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dan, go ahead. No, I mean, so I, I, I get that 100% because I'm actually putting together with a conference later this summer that has a lot of parallelisms. And, you know, the benefit of keeping it small is, and what we've done this summer is, is for some of the things we know are going to be popular, we run them multiple times. Mm -hmm. Right. So we ask the fact, you know, we ask the presenter, are you willing to do this more than yeah. once? And then if we do, we schedule it on two different times, two different days that a person, so that the likelihood of a collision occurring, right? Like, yeah, it could happen where, you know, it's counter program against two things you also really want to see, but the likelihood that the likelihood that it's both that you, get, you won't get to go to at least once is, is significantly reduced. And that's how we kind of address that thing where it's sort of like, oh, I really want to go to X or I'm presenting an X slot against something that I really want to see, but I know that that will happen again. So I'll go there's, to it in the second iteration. It's also like whatever is the Pekachuka. Oh, uh, Pekachuka. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. The, the, I've seen it where, because how many slides is that? Hey, Ignite. They are also called Ignite sessions. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's like you get five minutes. It's it's like five or six minutes. You have X number of <laughs> seconds per slide. Yeah. It has to go rapidly. Usually, uh, the way we've done it in the past is you pre-record it, and or you're there, and your slides are preset and timed so that they will automatically you progress. Don't, don't, don't stress people. You don't stress people. You don't no, stress people. I'm just saying we do this with our every summer. 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 Please use the word. <laughs> it is um, the worst, but it also it, it forces you to say, "I'm going to talk about this one thing that I'm doing," yeah, and yeah. that's the the skill of it is not trying to talk about everything, yeah. but like. You know games and learning works, you know this, this is the one thing that I did, and I just want to talk about it. Little path of plenaries and 
game demos slash play testing. Mm -hmm. So oh, that can be too. Yeah. You know, I can I can take a strong fire to a, a demo session, mm -hmm. and then I'm just in there for ten minutes saying play my game and ask me questions. And I can also be on a plenary and talk about culturally informed game design, yeah. right? So and then how would you feel if because this is another factor I've been considering is I I was the one who vetted everything that came through. So it, it wasn't like there was a team of people who peer reviewed all of this. It was me going, yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'll do that. <laughs> and I don't know that that's the most like uh, democratic way to do things or like the most uh, scholarly way to do that. <laughs> Um, right. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Is so going back to your idea of sort of some sort of hybrid. Imagine that instead of having three traditional presentations simultaneously, we do one track is the demo, one track is the plenary discussion, and based on what people propose in that survey, I send out about invitations. I then say, okay, you three are all doing something really similar. I'm going to put you in contact with one another. I want you to figure out what you want to do with that yeah, time as a team. 45 minutes, yeah. And you're, you're going to do with that 45 minutes what you want. If, if that's you all like talk over each other, then totally that's fine. It, it's a lot of trust, yeah. right? And I oh, but think, that's what we're trying to build. Right, yeah. No, I'm, that's a that's strength I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying that's a lot of, it's like you're, you're giving people trust and you're saying, I trust that you all are going to work together yeah. and that you're going to make the best of this. And then that helps, I think, breed even more trust between everybody as academics, right? That we are here to talk, support, and understand what everybody's doing so that we can all do a bit better. Yeah. One of the things that's, oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that, like, you have a cool grad program here, and in addition to having them make sure that the lights are on, <laughs> they could also, like, a really cool thing that they could do mm. is look over those, That's do that idea. grouping work, maybe even help some with the call in terms of sure. framing yeah, totally. yeah. what we are interested in, or what they're interested in, right? Yeah. Like, well, I think that'd be a cool opportunity yeah. for the grad students to yeah, <laughs> maybe part of that that whole word of like so if you identify these three people, could there be like an an honorary grad student connection with them to help mm. build that? That's theory? a good idea too. Yeah. So, so kind of assigning a facilitator for that yeah. process yeah. through the year. Yeah. That, then they're getting a, a direct personal right. I mean, with three industry leaders. That's a good point. I, so I, the way I'm thinking about this is. Yeah. Uh, we get proposals for projects or ideas or whatever. We look as a group, myself and the grad students and, and whomever, whatever colleagues want to participate in that process and say, here are the themes that jump out across yeah. all of these things, or here are the themes that drop, jump out across these three. Let's group them together. Here's your moderator, presenter, uh, facilitator, whatever we're going to call that position. They're going to help you coordinate with one another to the extent that that's helpful to you. If you don't want their help, that's fine. That's just we're going to expect you to come in and the three of you will have an idea for what you want to do. And that way, like you said, it gives everybody an authentic reason to be here professionally in addition to creating two separate tracks that do two distinct things. And like you were saying, you could be on one of those three person plenary discussions, but also have a play session, yep. which works out pretty well if you keep this small because we all basically want both for each yeah. ourselves. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm optimistic about that. I think it's a good idea. And, and GLS, they've done it twice. Once at GLS, they had me and somebody else who recently graduated talk to all of their students who were going into their final year about what it's like to write a dissertation. And they just said, hey, are you free? You know, like, it wasn't like a session. It was like off in another building. Anywho, and another sat like, there and cried. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. And I was like, it's the most scarring thing you will ever have. Yeah. And that's if you're successful. Funny piece of nuggets. Exactly. But talking to like you and I talking over lunch about what it's like to write a digital dissertation, right? right? I mean, like not many people have done that and we've both done that. And if there's like a group of people who want to hear what's it like writing a digital dissertation, we can tell you what it was like in 2013 because it wasn't fun then. It's probably more. It's probably more fun now, but it wasn't fun then. But those are things too, in which that's a community mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. But on that same idea, the two things that I would like to sort of see formalized in the future is people who are dealing with the same administrative bullshit. So <laughs> how do we use language? How do we use metrics that will yeah. fly with administrators from coast to coast? Yeah. And then the other thing would be how can we somehow find ways to work together? So how can we teach a class and then come back for Frontiers number three 
talk about it at Frontiers number two. We're going to do this thing where we collaborate and build a world with our students, and then we'll come back at Frontiers three and talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's also grant money for bringing yeah. different institutions from different regions to working together. Yeah. Well, I think fun. that having sort of like a, let's talk this year, let's have a plan for this academic year, and then let's talk about how it happened, and having some sort of cycle of that, because everybody's like, here's the thing that I'm doing, and here's the people who I was could get within an arm's reach yeah. who was willing to work mm -hmm. with me. When I'm in these situations, I'm like, I want to you, and I want to assist you. It's a conference problem, right? You always come in, as we were talking about design the other yeah. day, narrative. You always come in at the end of the process. You only see the finished mm -hmm. narrative, right? Yeah. And it would be nice if oh, we could do some of that. Yeah. yeah. Steve, I, I think you can I got around a lot of this to the initial survey mm -hmm. by, by saying, okay, these, these are the things, I mean, hopefully we're going to remember what we're saying right it's now. It's all being recorded. <laughs> so, so for better, it's for better or worse. We're interested in happening at this conference. Um, uh, and give us an idea of how, what, what fine thing, up to fine things that you think you'd like to talk about. That's a good idea. I was thinking, would it be better to do just check the box? But I actually like your idea. Here's four or five short answer. Well, yeah. I think, I think they should have keywords. Yeah, that's and, uh, and, and then you can go through. And I mean, if you say to everybody in the survey, look, this is going to be a great conference. You have to be ready. You don't want something here and let your ready. Right. You want ready? You want ready? Do you enjoy your impression? So, <laughs> yeah. GLS do that I really like is they started to invite people that gave grants. It was oh, a couple of years <laughs> when. So you'd see like this whole fort over there, and they're like, "Oh, they're all surrounding the NSF guy." <laughs> and I'm like, Why? I kind of get that, but it, but it made for a really interesting opportunity for the grant writers mm -hmm. to understand the language. Because well, like we just got a grant. That I put grant writing on board I, yesterday. You and did. I, you did. And I that... it out. <laughs> but I, I think there's some uh, insane value there. For the people yeah. writing the grants because they don't even know the language yeah. and the words that we use like it's, we were just get, we just got a grant for writing or creating 360 degree videos mm -hmm. which is words that were used about 10 years that's ago right. before vr right. and i'm like that's embarrassing but we'll catch the check yeah <laughs> i feel like from, from some of these suggestions what i'm hearing is that at least some sessions devoted to professionalization. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and I know we, administration we had a conversation earlier about like even just like the, the different one, what positions people have, because mm -hmm. some of us in this room have some very weird positions mm -hmm. that right. don't fall into a traditional sort of academic. And, 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 and then yes. like Two, you know, like where where next? How do you go from right. here? What is yeah. what's the progression? Of way? Is it tenure then done? Is it? You know, one of the things too we did for the creative writing studies organization, which is the other sort of big thing that I that I do, was we wrote guidelines for programs about what creative writing studies was and how it could be assessed, how that kind of work could be assessed, mm -hmm. and then sent it to all the PhD programs that we knew of. Mm -hmm. And that could be a kind of document that might be useful. For people who are going up for tenure in places where they're the only one doing that kind of work. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it's one of those things like I don't really need that, but I could see to, someone, that, else, does. someone else could have used of your game Yeah, your yeah, time. right. Uh, I think that there's a little bit of that professional development or we've been down this road yeah. or things along those lines that if no, we, if we no had, <laughs> or, you know, outside readers for uh, tenure as well. Like, you know, when I don't know who, to, I get a certain number of names, but I don't know enough people outside my own institution, like those kinds of things. To again, kind of going back to what Roger was saying, it's about building a community and there's building trust. Yeah, outside uh, member on a disc community. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's another thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Okay. I mean, I'm feeling optimistic. I, I certainly feel better about where we ended up than I felt a week ago when I was <laughs> at um, the um, And I mean, I'm just saying thank you for putting this on. Yeah. 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 For my own good. Like, I mean, but 
really, I, there are other things that I would love to hear more about that we didn't have going on, like esports stuff. Obviously, like we didn't have an esports thing this week. Well, we're going to make the panel about tomorrow. That's that's the okay. Thing. That's perfect. Yeah. You can talk. Well, I mean, and I, I hope you do. It'd be like we have a grad student who's just finishing up right now, whose entire dissertation was about esports coaching and the relationship to teaching STEM courses. Right. So, the, what are the relationships between being a science teacher and looking for identifying the kinds of skills that students use when they're playing esports and that to me is interesting because it's not just how do you build an esports team it's how do you integrate that team building into your academic coursework and so I, I actually think one of the strengths of doing this as a curated experience is that if we had you and Andrew and, and somebody else who does esports related stuff all together in one of those plenary discussions it doesn't have to be about any one of those things. Right. It could be about right. It's about all of them, and you have a robust discussion about the ways that esports can. And you're speaking to an audience that isn't going. What's well, League of Legends? Like I've never heard of Overwatch. What's that? And um, or, or maybe I'm being you know too cynical. But no, I, no, you're right. I, no. I, I, I don't want anyone to feel like they're getting <laughs> caught in this cycle of okay. Let me start at the very beginning of all of this. Like we don't need to go to Genesis to be able to explain how we ended up where we are. Sega so Genesis? Sega Genesis. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, everyone in this room laughs at that joke, right? That's not every not every conference you'd get that. <laughs> yeah. So an audience test we passed. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the first thing on the survey. I'll drop that joke, and if you get it, you get right. it. But, yeah. Did you uh, have to just check yes or no? Right. Just say the word friend in the end. Um, so here's where I'm my, my brain is at right now. I'm thinking um, after I have a, a week to kind of rest and, and think through all of this and re-listen to this discussion, I think what I'll do is talk to Juliet about starting the process of getting this set up. And I think a lot of it will go faster and easier because it's going to be like, yep, we did that last time. Let's do that again. Or here's how we're modifying that a little bit. Or here's who I want you to talk to about this thing. And that'll alleviate some strain for me. I also offload to us offload to other people. I also think that, like I said, this is the one time of year I don't have a lot professionally going on because the spring semester has ended. Our ed tech program doesn't start up again until July. So we have about five, six, seven weeks in between that where this kind of fits neatly in the center of it. Um, I do think that one of the things I'll look to other people for is again, figuring out who do we invite or how do we do that? And having been here, I think that's also going to be a part of it is you'll know what to expect and who to cater to, right? Whereas the first time around, even myself, I'm like, I'm going to email everybody and be like, Hey, I know you do this random thing. I actually had emailed a couple of people who were like, I haven't done game stuff in a decade. I don't know why you thought, you know, uh, Henry Jenkins, I think was one of them who wrote back to me. He's like, yeah, thanks for considering me, but I don't do any of that. Um, and so, you know, there are a couple of people who um, I would anticipate would be able to give some, some good insights into what this was like or what the experience might be for somebody else. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll follow through with, with Juliet and see what we do to, to bring it back together. But that's encouraging to hear that people actually want to come back and do this again, because my biggest fear coming into it was going to be like, this is a bust. So like we put in all this work and energy, not that it would suck and people would be unhappy with it, but just it's like, mediocre. Well, right, like, yeah, yeah, it was, it was fine. Like, you know, I did the thing. It was fun. Um, this what, is my yeah. third conference in two and a half weeks, and this is the only one that I'm going home with a detailed page of notes. That's good to and know. This is, and this yeah. is the books and games. The, that's, those are the things. Yeah. Yeah. At the other two conferences, I felt like it was just me pouring into the field that mm -hmm. doesn't always want me there. Mm -hmm. And this is the one where I feel like I am getting more out of it than I am putting into it. That's, I think, a really important consideration. And that's exactly how I feel about it myself. Like, I put in this time, but I actually get a lot out of this. Yeah. Like, I get to talk to people who I want to continue working with. And it's an opportunity not just to spend time with friends, but also, you know, all the stuff that I never got out of AERA, which is, you know, I'll go to the sessions, but the reason I really went was because I was a grad student and there was free wine everywhere. <laughs> like, it had nothing to do with 